So uh, we're in character creation. I can select uh, my background. Uh, so these are all the Dungeons and Dragons backgrounds that you know to play Dungeons and Dragons. I can change my body type. I can change my race. So I can play as a tiefling. I can play as a drow. I can play as a human. I can play as a good Yankee. I can play as a dwarf. I can play as an elf. I can play as a half elf. I can play as a half drow. I can play as a halfling. <laughs> And uh, there's more, but we're only showing a few. Uh, these are the races that will be going into early access, and there are more will be added afterwards. And so depending on which race I pick, I get different features. Uh, I can also select which class I'm going to play. We have six classes that will be available on early access from the get-go, and then we'll just add more as we, pro we progress. Um, uh, so I can play as a wizard, cleric, uh, fighter, uh, ranger, rogue, and Warlock, and then I can pick uh, the abilities, that, uh, ability points that go with that and select my skills in which I'm going to be proficient. Today, we're gonna play an origin story. So we have different origin stories. Uh, there's gonna be five that are gonna be in early access. There will be more after. Uh, so this is Lysel. She's the girl you saw in the intro. So she is a Git Yankee. Uh, Gale is a wizard. Uh, he has a very big problem, and that's pretty much that he's going to explode. Um, Shadowheart, she's a uh, dark cleric. Uh, so she's got quite a story too. Will is a monster hunter who made a pact with the devil. He regrets it. Um, and today we're going to play as Astarian, who is a vampire spawn. Uh, he's a noble. Uh, so vampire spawn is not really a vampire. He has a vampire, a vampire to which he is a slave. Uh, he's a high elf, which means that we get to select a cantrip for him. So we're going to pick Mage Hand because we're going to do cool things with it. And all the rest is already preset for him. So we just have to click the Venture Forth button and we can continue.
Um, so we're going to skip the tutorial uh, because it's not ready yet. Uh, and so I'll tell you what happens in the tutorial, or at least in a nutshell. Uh, we're going to capture that Nautiloid. We're going to uh, do that together with the Git Yankee uh, warrior that you saw captured in the intro. And uh, we're going to teleport it to a place called Faerun, uh, more specifically to the Sword Coast, more specifically 200 miles to the east of uh, Baldur's Gate. That was, by the way, the city that you saw destroyed is not Baldur's Gate, it was Yartar. <laughs> Goodbye, Yartar. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Daylight. It can't be. What the hell is going on? So what I forgot to mention is that my vampire spawn normally can't walk into the sunlight, he can't go over running water, and he needs an invitation if he wants to enter somewhere. Uh, but apparently he can walk in the sunlight, so that's kind of handy for us. Um, so he's going to try to figure out what's going on. So uh, I can control the camera and put it in third person, uh, so then it's running behind me, or I can just go back top down and then basically play it in a yeah, traditional manner. So I'm going to like going like this, and let's have a look at what we can find. there. The sunlight. So this is a, a river, it's called the Kayontar. Better not push my luck. And it reaches all the way to Baldur's Gate, but we have no boat, so we're gonna have to go in a different direction. Uh, obviously you can see that it's been a lot of fun over here. It's an angle fisher. You have the little letter. Perfectly good blood. Um, the love letter is none of my business. So. Was the sky always this blue? It's magnificent. Starin doesn't really care about the fact that everybody's dead. Uh, Apple. She is banging at that door, so let's go ask and introduce ourselves. Blasted doors! I. What? Oh, it's you. I saw you on the ship. You survived, then? Suddenly I saw what she saw, felt what she felt. Anger, confusion, resolve. Ah! You. You've got the same thing I do. In your head. I felt it. Okay, so I have a whole bunch of dialogue options. Uh, so what just happened to us is because of the tadpole. I was already introduced to that in the tutorial. We call it mind melding. Uh, so we both have a tadpole in our head, and uh, we can telepathically c uh, connect to each other. Uh, but I'm also very hungry, so I'm playing this from the point of view of Astarin, Vampire Spawn. Uh, so you will see that all of my choices will be tailored to uh, being Astarin, essentially. So I'm going to stare at her and realize that I'm very hungry. What's the matter with you? Has that tadpole scrambled your brain already? So I can basically say, okay, well, I'll just uh, feed, uh, or uh, I can swallow my urge and feign ignorance, which is what I'm going to do because I uh, need a companion. Come on. The chase through hell, the creatures, what they did to us, the tadpole, that thing is going to consume us from the inside and turn us into mind flares. You and I need a healer. Finding one won't be easy in this wilderness. We'll need supplies. I'm hoping something of use might be behind these doors. But I've barely made a dent in them so far. Okay, so I can offer to help her, but I'm a rogue also, so I can tell her to save her strength, then that I'll pick the lock. By all means. I'm going to see what's at the top of this cliff. Hopefully there's no more of these creatures along the way. Uh, I uh, will, well, actually, I'll suggest that we join forces and say that that gives us better also survival. Or just company for our final moments. But you're right. Whatever lies ahead will be a little less daunting with support. You can call me Shadowheart. Uh, I can tell her that I'm a star in a reformed vampire spawn who can walk in the sunlight. Uh, or I can look, uh, choose not to tell her, which is a good idea. Uh, and uh, I can also question her what she knows about the things in each of our heads. Very little. Supposedly, those monsters breed by planting their tadpoles in people's heads. Over time, the infected victim turns into a mind flare. I don't remember how long it takes, but we should hurry. So that's a problem. I'll introduce myself, Astarian. Lead the way, Astarian. And I've made my first companion. 
try to lockpick that door. But I don't have a lockpick, so that's not gonna... So, whoops, and I got myself into the door. All right, uh, let's see if this fine gentleman has something of use that he doesn't. Uh, so let's continue, see where I'm gonna end up. More of those wretched things. Oops. So that's usually an introduction to combat, when you see something like that. So let's try uh, and see what that is. Where are they? Oh yeah, this is. So combat is turn-based, because Dungeons & Dragons is a turn-based system, so we base ourselves on that. I need to be ca very careful for these uh, intellect devourers, because if they get too close to me, it will be very painful. Uh, this can actually end up in a party wipe, but I'll do my very best not to let that happen. I'm going to seek the high ground. In Dungeons & Dragons, seeking advantage allows you to roll twice, which is a good idea, because there's a lot of dice rolling going on behind the scenes, uh, as you'll soon see. Uh, we translate the dice rolls into percentages so that you don't have to do all the mathematics yourself. So this gives me a 90% chance to hit, so that's a pretty good one. Also... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll manage, don't worry about it. That's a 45%, that's not so good. Uh, but let's try. Let's, I'm casting Sacred Fire, let's see what that does. Right, so puny two damage. Uh, so if you're curious to know how the calculations are going happening, they're happening behind the scenes here. You can just hover over it and then you can learn all of the, um, the math behind. The numbers that you see, which is why Jesse said lots of numbers. Um, we're going to be very brave and we're just going to go up there. Um, and then I'm going to see how far I can get the star in because I don't want him to die right away. All right, Shadow Heart. Well, she's not really me, she's just my recruit, so. Got shield of faith of her. The bonus actions. These are my actions. These are my bonus actions. You just see, yeah, it says AP. It's a little bit misleading, uh, but it's actually just the actions that you have. Uh, but sometimes you can have two of them. Uh, so I'm going to end my turn, and now it's the enemy's turn. See what they do. Unfortunately, they can jump. But that's good. I couldn't hit me. That's actually not that bad. Uh, so what I'm going to do with Shadow Heart is I'm going to try something that's a little bit risky, but sometimes works. Uh, I'm going to use Shot, and I'm going to try to... Oh, it's going to work. Yeah, there you go. So that guy is a little bit further from me, and then uh, she can still hammer at that guy. Really not hitting very well. Uh, and then I'm going to shoot with a star at that guy. So yeah, we're doing pretty good, actually. Combat is fairly high stakes, as you can see. <laughs> um, so they have a reaction, so that basically means if she walks away from here, they're gonna hit her, which is not good. Um, so what I'm gonna do, and he and he can't walk. Yeah. Uh, so I have a jump. I didn't want to use it yet, uh, but first I'm going to. Oh man, uh, that's jump as a bonus action in DG3. So that means that I can't use another bonus action, but it acts as a disengage also, and it's enhanced by my death pool that I have in, inside of me. Uh, I do have one action that I can still do, so I'm just going to try it out. This is my mage hand. My mage hand is bad at many things, but it's very good at throwing stuff. Uh, so I'm going to just slap it. There you go. Uh, <laughs> That's I wanted to show this to you today, but you have no idea how nervous I was about doing it because I was going to get in this situation. So I obviously should have approached them in a completely different manner. We'll see in the next combat how you can actually be much more strategic on it. Famous last words, I guess, but uh, we'll see. All right. Um, she is hurting, so she's going to drink my first healing potion. I don't have a lot of them. And then she's just going to... Well, actually, I don't want to use it up. I'll just smack it like this. Maybe I'll get back. All right, well, can I run even further? No. <laughs> All right, let's, here it comes. That's good. Oh, no, 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 no. It's getting back up. Very high stakes. Um, he's hiding for the shot. That's interesting. 
Okay. Um, Mage Hand, where are you? Do your thing. It's 80%. So, sorry. Yeah, you can also throw uh, bodies that you find in the world, but it's not working. So that's why I'm using the shove, actually. I mean, it's working, but it doesn't look as good. Oh, why did I go to sneak? I misclicked. Really, did I put my hand into sneak? That's really clever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so... Yeah, the, the announcement was that it was going to be live, I think, so there you go. All right, 90% shot. That should, oh, yeah, actually, I have a pin-down attack, which is an uh, action that you get with your weapon. So each weapon that you get gives you an extra type of action. Uh, yes, you're, I know that you're sneaking. Um, they come off. All right. <laughs> you got this. You got this. Uh, hold on. Uh, I have a plan. I have a plan. I got a bottle with grease, so I'm just going to throw... Can you stop hand? And I normally he's not supposed to be able to hit like this. Actually, can you? Can't you do anything here still? If, if they want to attack you, maybe. Oh, oh, they killed. No, they didn't kill hand. Okay, all right. So oh, they did kill hand. Yeah, hand is not supposed to die, but um, well, it's going swimmingly. Okay, so I wanted to throw, um, so I have a throw action, I can throw pretty much everything. In a presentation I did previously, I threw my boots. Uh, so for comedial effect, I'll just throw my boots. Maybe I'll actually just kill him. Oh, that's it. Good work, good work. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> that's not that bad, actually. Um, so, where is she? Hey, oops, she doesn't want to close anymore. No, it's enter, yeah. Please close. That's so she's down, she's not dead yet. So that's the good news. Um, so basically how this works is uh, this is death saving throw. So uh, each turn uh, there's going to be a roll behind the scenes. And if it's a good roll, uh, then we're going to get a little blue spot like this. And if we have three of them, she gets stabilized, which is cool. And if we get three red ones, because it's a bad roll, then she dies. And uh, they are going to keep on hitting at her, because if she goes to the negative of her, ma of her maximum HP, she dies too. So uh, we're going to try to avoid that from happening. Uh, but I'm really not interested. Okay, so... I shouldn't have thrown the boost, by the way. That was a really stupid move. Um, this looks like a really good hit. Good, excellent. And we have one guy left. Uh, thank you. Uh, why? Uh -huh. Okay, well, let's hope that this one is going to go right. Okay, well, uh, I did tell you that. Oh, stand up, stand up. No, stand up. Hold on. Does this work? Uh, I, I was too late. All right. So, so I do have uh, the save game problem is real. So <laughs> it is genuine. So I need to restart. So I'm just going to do a quick restart. I'll just do it as fast, and then we'll just uh, we'll do Q and A for five minutes. <laughs> uh, you got it out of the way early. Yeah, that's why they gave us in a half hour extra, Jesse. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're fine. I'll, uh, I'll just sneak past the fight and we'll go to the next one. Because otherwise, we might be in trouble. <laughs> Luckily for you, we have a save so button. So allow me to, to rapidly. Uh, let me do that. I can trip. Take my trusty mage hand. Man. Adventure 4. Go forward into the game. And uh, I will recruit Shadowheart again, so I'll do that in the shortest possible manner. And then I suggest we try to avoid the intellect of wars. Take a different route if we can. And if we can't, well, we'll have to fight them again before we proceed with our adventure. So yeah, I've done this, like, we've done a press tour in the last three weeks, and I've done this like 30, 40 times. Um, 
I in general do not die on it. Uh, although it's all, always tight. But it's daylight. Meanwhile, we can also look at a few other skills in the game. I'm gonna make him walk over there. What the hell is this going on? Yeah. We're gonna just let Astarian run, run Astarian, run, 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 run over here. Thank you. So, meantime, we can have a look at uh, the back side of the UI. So, uh, this is where you see all my equipment. Here you see all of my abilities, and so when you click Who's on them, the you see uh, your skills, uh, your distances. And this is my spell book, uh, where uh, the spells that I know are going to be learned. Uh, okay. Drived. Blasted doors, I... What? Oh, it's you. I saw you on the ship. You survived, then. Suddenly, I saw what she saw, felt what she felt. Anger, confusion, resolve. Ah! You. You've got the same thing I do. In your head. I felt it. Okay, so I'm just gonna be very nice and, uh, well, actually, well, no, I'm just gonna recruit her right Come away. On. The chase through hell, the creatures, what they did to us, the tadpole. That thing is going to consume us from the inside and turn us into mind flayers. You and I need a healer. Finding one won't be easy in this wilderness. We'll need supplies. I'm hoping something of use might be behind these doors. But I've barely made a dent in them so far. Uh, I'm gonna help be you. Be my guest, but that door's too strong. Maybe there's another way, up the cliff. Hopefully, there's no more of these things. Uh. <laughs> or just company for our final moments. Well, that was true. But you're right. Whatever lies ahead will be a little less daunting with support. You can call me Shadowheart. Yep, I'm a star. Lead the way, Star. Do you All want right. to take an audience vote on if we do this fight again? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So now I'm doing. I'm gonna play it like a pro. Do it really well, and I'll show a few other things. First of all, I am gonna dip my bow into the fire. There we go. Then I'm gonna press this button, which allows me to enter turn-based mode outside of combat. And so, in that way, you can sneak up on people and you can do all kinds of things that they don't expect you to do. So and then, uh, basically, the way that that works is that they have six uh, seconds. Oh, yeah, see, these are... Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I can make this shot. It's too far, right? I haven't seen it. We cannot reach around. Okay. It's the enemy's turn. So they get to patrol for six seconds. But they're not doing anything. That's good. You see that over there? That's explosive. So I'm going to try to get there. I'm shoot it. 96%. Oh! <laughs> All right. Shadowheart is still waiting for me. Like, I'll make her join combat. much better. I feel much more relaxed about this fight. Um, I'm gonna pin him down. So he can't get too close. There you go. This is how it's supposed to be. And then I did actually have a very strong attack but I never got to use it which is guiding bolt. Uh, and but I'm gonna use it now. Where's the other guy? Oh he's still there. Uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm just gonna do this one. Yeah it's very successful also. Uh, but I mean, just put her in front of it, put on my shield. And all right. he can't move anymore, so that's good. The other guy is very enthusiastically coming towards us. Uh, she's going to use her guiding bolt, which in general is to kill them in one shot. There you go, 15 of damage. 
and then uh, we're gonna shoot. You fight well. <laughs> Exciting. Uh, uh, let's see what this guy has. He's got a silver locket, a dagger. I don't need a dagger. I got one already. But the rapier, I might want to use. Uh, so let's put that one on. Uh, there we go. And uh, go forward and explore a little bit more. Let's see what the world has to offer us. Get out of So, um, like in all of our games, you can move things in the environment, uh, but we've, we've added a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. So you can, for instance, make a stair. Why would you make a stair? Well, because we want to walk on it, of course. So we do that. Oh, shit. It's fine. You're doing great. It's fine. Turn-based mode. Uh, say that you want to kill this boar or talk to it or whatever. Um, you can now uh, just press the button and then you can just uh, plan your move, close to it, and then it has six seconds. So if I press my spacebar now, it will move for six seconds and then it's my turn. We'll uh, we'll use this to surprise people and sneak up on them and uh, hopefully do it really well. Um, I'm just gonna try to jump over. Although I think actually, well, no, I'll just do it. Do you think you can make this jump without dying? She can, she can, she can, she can. She's, uh, she's pretty badass normally, so it's uh, usually a star in the dice. Uh, so this is an example of a passive check. So my nature skill was used to discover uh, something. And so uh, if it would have failed, I wouldn't have found it, of course. So I found a little cache. The cache belongs to uh, the Harpers. Uh, so it gives me a little secret, but it's especially this thing that I need. This is a potion of speed. Uh, it will uh, double my, mo uh, my movement points, and it's going to also allow me uh, to get two actions, which is really good. Because we're going to try a very complicated stunt, which will probably succeed or fail. Uh, see what I did there, but probably succeed or fail. Uh, okay. No, well, actually, first we're going to go to camp. This seems as good a place as any to make camp and rest. Huh. Might as well adapt the day walker's ways. <laughs> so your camp is a place that's going to expand over time. Uh, you will be able to get followers in your camp. Uh, your companions will obviously be here also. And so uh, there's a lot of relationship building happening in your camp. I'm not sure this is a good idea. I can tell her not to question me. Uh, or, <laughs> uh, but I'm going to try to befriend her, so I'm uh, uh, going to ask her what she means. There are lit fuses in our heads. Sooner or later, they're going to blow. Each hour that passes, the thing inside us grows. We need to find a healer. Let's wake up at first light. Uh, okay, so I'm going to agree with her, uh, because finding help is indeed our very first concern. Maybe we'll get lucky. We're overdue some good fortune. Rest well. We'll need our strength. Rest. I tried to rest, but my mind wouldn't settle. Just yesterday, I had been seducing a young noble, luring him to my master's lair. Since then, I've been kidnapped by mind flayers, chased through hell by dragons, and fallen from the sky. And... I felt the sun on my skin. I should have burst into flames. So I can ask myself questions, a little bit of a moment of introspection. Um, I can think of my master, who will be furious. I could 
be a vampire spawn? Uh, yeah, actually, it's a good question. Can a vampire spawn even become a mind slayer? The worm in my head might not even have an appetite for undead meat. Until I knew more about the tadpole, I wasn't sure how much danger I was in. I had to understand it, master it. I needed to find someone who knew more about this thing. So uh, I'm going to try to, to get some sleep, and I'm going to imagine uh, dragging my old master into the sunlight. And that's a persuasion against myself, so I need to roll, uh, uh, I need to do an intelligence check, basically. <laughs> right on target. So, so the way that works is actually there's a built modifiers on it, and but we just show you the actual DC that, that, that comes out at the end. Um, I drifted off with a smile, meditating on the flames that engulfed his cruel face. So he's going to be happy in the morning. Um, okay, let's continue our little adventure. So all of the dialogues in the game, like literally all of them, have been performance captured, voice uh, recorded, given cinematic treatment. Uh, there uh, hasn't been any compromise because of all the cinematics that we're doing in there, so there's plenty of permutations. And you need to realize that I'm now playing with Astarian, so if we wouldn't be playing with Astarian, we would have different things happening to us. And you'll see that we've gone very far in this. There may be even more than survive a crash. Dead goblins over there. Worth checking for supplies, maybe. All right, let's have a look at what the goblins have. The shitty boat. Shitty sword. We might need those, I noticed already. No, everything is useless here. I'm gonna go over there. We're alive! That's unexpected. Last I saw you, you were lying in a crucible's worth of blood. An intellect devourer nibbling at your ear. Glad to see my eyes deceive me. I'm Gale. Well met. So, my vampire option is that I send something off. I was certain it would taste like bile. Uh, I can obviously draw my weapon, because I don't trust the guy. Uh, well, I'm going to take the vampire one. Speechless? Might be the shock. We went through a traumatizing experience. If an instructive one. I asked if by trauma he referred to the thing they put in my eye. Yes. The ocular penetration by an illithid tadpole, which will end with our souls being snuffed like strands of weave caught in dead magic. Not to mention, you're staring at me like a rashimi at a blackboard. You're no wizard, are you? Um, I can obviously just decide to feed. Um, but um, I will tell him that I don't take kindly to insults. Thin-skinned and a dodger of questions. Usually means the answer's no. Guess that'll have to wait. Primary need now is a healer. I take it you recall the insertion of the parasite? Uh, not only did I recall it, I said I was already enjoying its effects, referring to the fact that I can walk in the sunlight. Interesting. Are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it'll turn us into mind flayers? A process known as ceramorphosis? It is to be avoided. I assume you're no accomplished healer, either. Powerful cleric, maybe? Okay, was this a conversation or an interrogation? Just trying to figure out where we stand. Conclusion? Nowhere. You and I are in a whole lot of trouble. We need help, and I'm not sure where we'll find it in this wilderness. How about we embark on the quest for a healer together? Yes, we need a, a wizard. A wizard is going to be very Most good. Most excellent. Then, without further ado, let's be off. Besides, looks like you keep some interesting company. A woman with shadows for eyes, deep as the dark lake. Pleasure, madam. Is it indeed? We'll see. All right. We're gonna get along smashingly. Um. Let's get over there. I'm just gonna do a few things for. Oh yeah, actually I just killed him, so we're good. Um, so I'm gonna separate him from my party because I know what's coming. So I want to show you something. And I'm gonna go with them. Well, actually, I'm first gonna position him. Because these guys, this can turn out badly as a combat. Uh, so I'm gonna go over here. See me yet. Then I'm gonna jump here. And then I'm gonna sneak. And 
so the way sneaking works in uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is that if you see a shadow, it's going to lightly obscure you. All right? And if you walk into the sunlight, you are going to be in uh, the clear area. So when you're in a clear area and you get seen, uh, you are called on sight. If you go into a uh, obscured area, then you have to roll stealth um, d20 and uh, yeah, if you get caught, uh, you get caught. But you might actually succeed. If you're heavily obscured, uh, as you will soon see, uh, you can actually just walk right past them. And it's kind of cool because every single shadow uh, suddenly has use. Uh, but it also means that you can manipulate shadows. Because you can put the light or you can remove light. Uh, anyway. He's here standing on his crate because that's what he does. Um, so I'm just going to leave him here. And then uh, I'll go over here. And I'll... Uh, demonstrate a small thing that I just discovered this morning. So normally what I do here, well first of all I show that you still have all kinds of environmental interactions that you can use, everything that makes sense within the world of Dungeons and Dragons we've uh, put in. So, uh, you can vaporize water with fire, uh, but um, there's also other cool things that you do. So normally I just show this and I say okay well this is where we are, we start from here. Basically I do it to show that you can navigate over a very high and vertical world. Uh, but I figured that if I cast Featherfall, then I make a jump. Boom! Okay. So she still has Featherfall. Oh yeah. if, I, if she would have jumped without Featherfall, maybe we can do that too. Uh, <laughs> she will die. Uh, anyway, now he has to walk back. But <laughs> so let me just do that. Featherfall is a very useful spell. The game has an enormous amount of verticality. We'll never get to the places where the verticality is high today uh, because uh, yeah, we just don't have enough time and we introduce it uh, gradually to players. Uh, but you, you will be surprised by how much stuff you can do. You can walk on roofs. Uh, you can jump all the way down into very, very, very deep holes. Uh, just don't forget the Featherfall. The problem with Featherfall is it takes up a, uh, if, you, if you use it. Uh, well, never mind. I'm not going to say that. Uh, all right. Let's uh, do the thing I was supposed to do. So, okay, you go in. Okay. so and let's regroup them. So there's a small problem with the interface here, so you're not always seeing if they're grouped, but they should be grouped, hopefully. No, you're not grouped. I want to be grouped. You're grouped. Okay. So let's go meet these fine gentlemen and um, say hello to them. You both twice as tall as me, but I'm half the bloody backbone. But we don't know what that thing even is. And what about the crypt? I'm telling you, it's a ship. And the crypt can wait. Mari and Barton have been trying to break in for days. Now we stop. Got ourselves competition already. That's our ship. Okay, so we have a bunch of persuasion options. Uh, I can tell them that I was just looking around, tell them that the ship was full of monsters, uh, my many comrades were coming, um, or I can try to in intimidate them. I'm going to tell them there's plenty of monsters, and then that's going to be a roll. And that is going to be a fail, failed roll, which is fine. I mean, it's a... Uh, you roll hot okay. air. Think you can get us to leave that bounty to you? Not a chance. What are you lot waiting for? Get her! Okay. So... Uh, luckily for me, I planned for this. And so, if you do a shot out of a sneak position, that is a 100% chance. And so... So, uh, that was my action for this one. So let's try to do this really well. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Grease. So Grease is going to create difficult terrain for these guys. And difficult terrain is basically going to half their movement speed as they're trying to go over it. Uh, so that's good. I also, we made Grease flammable. Uh, so if I can uh, put fire on it, it's going to hurt them double. Uh, unfortunately, I have no source of fire anymore because I used up my... Uh, Fire uh, bolt. So, Shadow Heart. 
however, is going to use her bolt. We have the 5% chance. This, I think this guy is the strongest, so I'm going to do it on, on that one. Let's see. Uh, uh, oh, she's, well, somebody's gonna have to stand there to protect the other guy. She has to just increase her AC. Okay, so there to her. Turn. Not down. Ah! Missed. That's good. Ball, so she can every turn as long as she's concentrated she's gonna be able to hurt me so I need to do something about that okay. otherwise this guy is trying to go up to get his advantage back <laughs> he changed his mind <laughs> I, uh, I wonder if he's having a problem here <laughs> Might be in an eternal loop. Uh, all right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to use a cheat here. Uh, no. Oh. Okay, so. Wow. Okay. Difficult. Oh yeah. No, it did work. I actually destroyed his ladders uh, secretly with a, se a secret button, which will remain secret. Uh, advantage of a, a developer version. Um, okay. Well, let's just do it and see what it gives. Right. Throw ice. Uh, it's not that bad. You can actually jump on them also, and that hurts them too. So with a warrior with feather fall, you could co combine that and then jump on somebody. That can hurt. However, this was actually really... I bet it was just a throw, I can still shoot. I need to make this hit, because otherwise Shadowheart is going to be in trouble. Um, doesn't have to be a pin down. 75% chance. Oh, that's... Okay, good. So, uh, that means that she... Is now home free. She can. Uh, why doesn't she have her spells? Oh, well, Forty percent is not good. I'm going to disengage. I think my jump. I can do this once in combat. Okay. Um, and I'll just. Finish. Oh man. Uh, where is I start? No, starting up there, but. Looks like I was a little bit too enthusiastic in sending Gale went away. So starting to interesting. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was good actually. Uh, this changes things completely. Alright. can dash. Okay, I was gonna make her dash. That gives her double move speed. Well, I'm not gonna get very far, but I'm getting a bit farther. Uh, uh, that, that cancels the entire effect. But maybe if I yell at them, I can't yell, I don't have a yell yet. We will have that, but... Um, uh, not that yet. That they can't, well, <laughs> uh, okay. Now we, we need to make this. We're not gonna die here. I gotta think. You're not one to restart again. 
say it again. Oh, yes. Thank you. That's why you guys are here. Shadow Heart has it. But we do have, ma we have magic pockets. We have magic pockets. You're basically telling me to run away, right? Oh, I have an, I have an excellent idea. This is going to work really well. Um, so let me... Well, let me first try killing him, actually. And, uh, did I throw something already? Oh, but I can still do my cantrip, apparently. Aha. Uh -huh. That is my second action, though. I want to run away. Uh, let's run really hard. Well, actually... I can shoot him again. Good work. So the cool part is, well, let's first see which direction they're going to go. Actually, because I can go back. Uh, he's not going to make it. But she could still make it. If I can get close to her and give her a helping hand, so it's going to be up again. Uh, okay, where are you? You're there, right? What I don't want to do is get too close to you. Then I can get back here, actually. Dagger. Makes a bit more sense. Yeah, D4, I mean, actually, those things help. <laughs> Just trying to party, kill my party all the time. Such an awesome man. Okay, so is that this one works well? Yeah. We'll get there. It might be hard work, though. Uh, oh, actually, but what I can still do. I get to shoot against, right? I keep on forgetting this. I got the second action. Alright, okay. Yeah, well. Uh, my boots? Uh, yeah, it, uh, it happened that you missed a lot. Why did he get two shots anyway? Did he take potion himself? Possible. So the AI thinks, looks at everything that it. Ah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So out of combat, they're death saving throw. Oh, she's really dead. She's dead, dead. Yeah, he's alive. That's that's good. I guess. Also. We'll worry about her later. We'll leave her there. She deserves it. Uh, well, let's first see what they had to pick up. Give me a can't reach. Standing next to her. There you go. It's actually... Uh, let's give this to Gail. Uh, uh, fancy stuff. Make him look more like a real wizard. He's a rope. A beard now. Um, guys, worth mentioning, of course, that the you can play the game in multiplayer also. Uh, and so, in multiplayer, uh, you can be multiple origin stories, etc. Uh, well, etc. I have to mention it. Uh, you can play as uh, e everybody's a hero essentially in the multiplayer story. So, and um, there's a whole bunch of that functionality. Uh, it's going to be very cool. It's going to enjoy playing multiplayer. Uh, like for instance, being able to participate in each other's dialogue, seeing what the other options uh, another person is considering. Something that can be quite intense, as you'll see soon enough. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go inside here. Thank you, Gimblebock! Everything all right out there? Uh, I'm gonna claim to be Gimblebock and ask him to let me in. Don't worry, we're safe. If it fails, we're okay. You sound a bit shaken, boss. Hang on while I find the key. Nice. You're dead! Nope, 
you're dead. And the reason why is because I, I surprise them, and then when you surprise somebody, you get the initiative. Uh, and so this guy has absolutely no chance. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to shoot and put him down. There you go. And then I'm going to shoot at him again. The next turn. He got me. There you go. And then I know he's going to try to run away towards his buddies. I've played this before, which is fine. So I'm going to shoot him again. And that's how easy it can be. <laughs> Alright, let's see where we end up. So we're now in a small dungeon. We're gonna do a Asar in the Great Tomb Raider. Um, so he's gonna do all of this on his own. Alright. Just as a demonstration of how systemic use of all the systems can be oh great Christ. success. Oh did, did I pick up my boots again? Dust. No, I'm bootless. Alright. So I'm going to switch the lights off. I'm going to go sleep mode. Carefully. And I'm going to put myself into force turn base mode. And I'm going to try to sneak up behind this one so I can Probably gonna start turning back, so I'm gonna go and stand the corner here. I'm heavily obscured, right? So if I don't come too close, they are not gonna detect me. All right. I'm just gonna stand there. No, there she is. This is the reason why. Anyway. So you have a little hole here. Why? Because this light is creating a zone that she can see in, and then the zone just in front of her. But here, if I were standing here, I would, I would have been actually okay. So another combo. Oh. Oh man. No. no. Sneak attack, so if I do it from a lead, I get 1d6 extra damage. Was uh, how'd you get past that? Why aren't you back off? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's not that bad. Um, I'm not gonna bite her yet, I'm gonna keep my bite for later. Uh, oh man, come on, really? actually that's what suggested that <laughs> and somebody put a pitch barrel here for me Here is that I'm, I'm gonna try to get into this place, but Look, how, does, how does it open? Well, I happen to know, so small spoiler. Uh, so let me just put the same thing here, try not to ruin it this time. So I'm gonna go in here, force turn base. So we're gonna create a zone of darkness. Darkness is basically going to cover me like this, so that he can't see me while I'm in there. Um, so and then just wait, pass by. So zone of darkness essentially blocks the the, the vision zone. Thank you. 
handle it opens the door on the other side. Right. So now I'm gonna just try to do it the other way. This guy will never know what's happened to him. That was actually quite close. So now he can see me. working on better visualization of this so uh, I doubt that you're gonna have it exactly like this when you when you get to play it. But Star in the Great Tomb Raider has managed to do something without being detected, which is quite an achievement. Alright, let's continue. So our door is open. This has a tendency of going wrong, uh, so I'll, I'll do my utter best. Uh, this is a, uh, yeah, That's curious. A, a tomb. There's dangerous things here. There's skeletons lying on the floor, and then there's uh, things that are uh, popping up. Then I have perception checks that are succeeding, that are failing, so you know that something's going to happen. And then there's this big thing in the middle. So <laughs> inside you find a cool weapon uh, and a key and a skull. So we're going to take everything. And then you have grease appearing everywhere, and then you got fire appearing. And so, but I knew exactly where to stand. <laughs> and I'm going to enter turn-based mode, because turn-based mode is also something that you can use to navigate traps. Uh, you got six seconds to think, and then the traps get their turn, and you get your turn. So you get the, the gist. So the way that I figured out I'm getting out of here is Mage Hand. Mage Hand can throw stuff, and so what I can do so that I can make my own stairs, so I can make a stair out of here. Mage Hand is just going to go over here. Well, let the evil trap do their thing. And then go back to Mage Hand. And I gotta do it the way that the way that I'm doing it because I practiced this and when I uh, did it wrongly, I threw it too far, the crate got damaged, and then I jumped on top of it, and then the crate got destroyed, and then I died anyway, so... <laughs> so and there we go. Okay, one more. So, having turn-based mode allows us to do much cooler traps, and not having you to require to have lightning fast reflexes uh, in what is a game which has many, many spells, many, many actions that you can do. Uh, so it's kind of handy to have. All right, also solves the problem if you want to talk to very fast creatures. No, ah. no, no! Sorry. No. Don't fall. Please don't fall. Okay. I'm gonna do my little jump now. There is enough space. Apparently not. Oh yeah. I wonder if that's a bug that I have. No. Oh, there you go. Okay, so that should work. There we go. So this builder blocks me. I'm just gonna send the mate. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, why do you have to follow mage hands? Oh, 
Oh, well, that's, that's handy, mate. Handy. Your perception check was successful. It's not supposed to have a perception check, but it's good of Mage Hand to do it. But that, that's cool, because then I can actually throw this thing on that. There we go. That way, there's no more grease coming out of it. And I'm going to jump. So, oh yeah, I use my jump. I think I can make it. Maybe if I dash. This is a bit harder than I expected it to be. <laughs> uh, so let me. Well, I know what I'm doing. So. All right. This, this is going to be a little bit uh, non orthodox, but. There you go. Ah. That's going to take that grease away. And let's just see what happens when I get out of turn base. My crate is broken. Well, I'll bet I made a corridor here, so that's good. So, so now we know that we can't trust. I uh, have my dash. Where's my dash? Let's dash. I'll get out of here eventually, but hopefully today. I guess I can walk over there and stand in the grease for a second. jump. No, we just have to get there now. Well, one more turn now. I'm not jinxed it. Okay. Can I dash again? Yeah, that should do it. Don't fall. Don't fall. Okay, we made it outside of the very evil trap. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna get to the final room of this mini dungeon. So this is the kind of situation you'll find yourself in if you're in multiplayer and you're just dashing off and leaving your party behind. You can always manage. Uh, it's just sometimes a little bit tricky. So many deaths. No signs of a struggle. So we're entering a big room, and so the you see a bunch of skeletons on the floor. So you are all gamers. You know what's going to happen. These guys are going to race. So here's a little trick I figured out. Is I can take their weapons away. Now, unfortunately, because disarming somebody is actually a uh, valid action, um, the AI developers are making it so that they will pick up the weapons that they uh, if they see something on the floor and they're unarmed, the AI will actually come to the same co conclusion on its own. Uh, but luckily, it's not implemented yet. <laughs> so we can take advantage of this today. I'm going to give this guy a sword just so that we can see the difference between the guys. Um, did I have all of them? I just want to make sure that the guys with the bow don't have a... Do you have a bow? Ah, there's another marksman over there, yeah. So I'm gonna try the final heist of this little tomb raiding adventure, and if I fail, they'll they'll spot me. And then when they spot me, what's going to happen is that they are going to, uh, well, they'll shoot me, and then I'll die. And then it's these fellas that have to come back and get me, and they are obviously uh, not very good at it, as you can see from their health bar. I'll then consider whether or not I'm gonna resurrect them. Um, oh no! Okay, my perception failed. So I need Gale. So, but Gale has a shortcut. There was actually a, oh, he can also bring a starting boost back. Uh, <laughs> so there's an actual shortcut, but I didn't want to do it because when you do it, it alerts the guards on the inside and they all gang up and then I can't do a starting on his own. Uh, if you shoot this thing and somebody's standing under it, he'll die. Uh, but uh, it also creates a hole uh, in the floor. And so like this, I can jump in it. find ourselves into this room here and then like this I can open this room so that was a shortcut but then they 
basically all the bandits that are in this dungeon then stand outside of this door and they're ready to, to kill you. Um, where is it? Oh, there is. Okay, let's go that way. So here we have a better chance of doing a succeeding in a history check. Which I think, uh, no, it's a perception. No, actually. Well, let's just try it out. Maybe we'll, we won't open it today, so that's another secret. The game is full of secrets, exploration is heavily rewarded. Uh, you will never see all the secrets in one go, it's impossible. Uh, so if you're min-maxer, you will curse secrets. at us. Yeah, thank you. Alright, I'm gonna get you out of here because otherwise I can't do my little Astarna hunt all alone stuff. Um, so I'm gonna send you over here, this is the exit. So this is where in a second Astarna will have to manage get himself okay press the button Click. get inside here an effort to hide one sarcophagus indeed I wonder what will happen uh, just in case right. okay so the reason why we came in here is because we wanted uh, we have poison that's fine because we can throw poison at people but not at skeletons of course uh, but there's Amulet of Joy and Sorrow, which gives me the Speak with Dead spell. So speaking with dead is something uh, that you can do. With the Amulet. Provided they have a mouth. Oh, hell, something just woke up. Unfortunately, I don't have my... Sp I just realized that this is the reason I keep my Speed Potion in general. standing here anyway. Alright, let's just hug the wall and wait for him to move. Eh, let's wait a little bit longer. There you go. Okay. This should be easy at this point. So this is also why we need some better indications so that we're working on uh, because this looks bright because the artist took the light here but for the game it's actually it's a, it's a heavily obscured zone so it's a little it's the kind of things that we still need to fix uh, all right i'll be good i think with the potion of speed i was already out of here somebody made me drink it Thank you for that, but ooh. Well, I'm heavily obscured. They actually have dark vision, so they actually, it should have been a check. Uh, so I think that the system doesn't register it fast enough. Uh, yeah, they, the dark vision does work, uh, so. But it's fine, it's good. I mean, like, look, we're almost at the exit, uh, and they have no arrows, they have no bows, they have no weapons. Look, okay, they all have their hands. Like, so, this is exactly how it should be. Uh, the AI is trying to figure out what the hell am I going to do. Like, uh, I'm going to dash uh, with my dash. That's going to allow me to get very far. And then don't do anything. Yeah. All right. And then that's my movement bar, by the way. Uh, so the amount of movement I have. Gail joins the thing, the action. Oh, I only have five minutes left. Oh shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I was my phone is charging. I forgot my timer. So, <laughs> all right. Well, let me. I I wanted to show you one last thing. So, a little bit of audience participation. Um, so let me try to do that as fast as I can. Oh. <laughs> He 
he gave up. <laughs> he was like, I'm done. No, I don't think I'm going to get out of it. 